I'm going to be talking to Evelina Stoiku from Bloomberg NEF about some of the changes in the battery industry, but from a technology point of view, all sorts of chemistries that are emerging to compete with the uh, lithium iron phosphate and the uh, lithium NMC batteries. And uh, so it's very, this is a very dynamic sector. I'm looking forward to her observation. So welcome to the interview, Evelina. Thank you. Uh, indeed, battery technology is a very exciting topic. Um, there are a lot of different technologies emerging, and many of them are at different stages. So a lot of them are um, commercial and produced at very large volumes. We, we typically refer to these as conventional lithium-ion technologies, and these include lithium-ion phosphate, like LFP, or nickel-based chemistries like NNC and NCA. Um, and then we have uh, next-generation technologies, which either build on many of the existing uh, technologies that we see today, or oftentimes they're completely different. They use different materials. So for example, sodium ion, which um, doesn't have uh, lithium and is based on, on sodium. Um, so it's a very dynamic space. Uh, the majority of the market is still dominated by a lot of the conventional technologies with the uh, LFP probably being the biggest one for most markets. Um, and uh, definitely one of the most uh, emerging ones as, as we see the next couple of years. Um, but with battery technologies, it's definitely worth looking at into the future and looking at a lot of these new technologies that can potentially um, compete or um, replace uh, existing technologies for certain markets. Evelina, my take on this is that we're, as the... Uh, installed base of batteries continues to expand rapidly at a global level. And so we're talking about in the electric transportation, uh, all of the various, you know, light duty, medium duty, heavy duty, buses, two wheelers, three wheelers, on and on and on. The more applications there are and the more adoption there is, the more uh, there, some of these uh, batteries are emerging to serve niche markets. And uh, I, uh, we're talking about sodium ion, for example, which uh, uses, uh, well, sodium instead of lithium, uh, but it's heavier. And so it's not, it's maybe not going to, we're not going to see it in uh, electric vehicles, but it might be a very good application for utility scale storage, or maybe even uh, residential storage, uh, commercial storage. Is, is that a, a good way to look at how the battery industry is expanding globally? Yes, absolutely. And different technologies, especially newer ones, are going to be suitable for different segments. Um, sodium ion is a, is a great example um, because it's relatively similar to manufacture with lithium ion. Uh, we've actually seen uh, quite a lot of momentum in companies with commercial products. But because of its lower energy density, it's uh, more of a choice uh, for most cases for us. Uh, stationary storage, which doesn't have the space or, or as many weight limitations compared to EVs. Um, when you look at maybe different technologies, uh, for example, different solid state technologies um, or innovations in materials such as uh, silicon or lithium metal anodes, um, then um, you a lot of these companies are targeting smaller and niche applications. Um, one, because um, the demand for those segments is typically smaller and they can meet those volume requirements. Um, another reason is because uh, a lot of these segments are, are less sensitive to cost. Um, and when you're commercializing a new technology, it's typically, typically gonna be more expensive than your conventional LFP. So a lot of these companies would be targeting um, applications such as um, aviation, military, um, that can basically uh, meet these volume and cost requirements. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, and, and, and at the same time, a lot of these smaller applications are used as a, a test bed to, to sort of prove the concept, prove that the technology works uh, at that scale, and then slowly uh, move to bigger markets such as EV, EVs. The other point when to, to consider with new technologies is that for EVs, the validation cycles are quite long. So it takes a long time to uh, confirm that a, a certain battery technology is okay to go into an EV, but maybe it's much easier to go into a different application first to prove the concept. 
Let's talk about solid state for a minute, because as long as I've been reporting on the battery industry, solid state has been just around the corner or, you know, two or three years away. Now uh, I'm hearing that maybe, you know, we're seeing some small batch uh, or, you know, uh, small applications like motorcycles, for example. I think there's a Chinese company that's making an electric motorcycle with solid state batteries. Um, where are we at with that? And when might we see it uh, be adopted at commercial scale in the marketplace? Yeah, that's another good question. And it's true that we've been hearing a lot of solid state announcements, and it's difficult to, to sort of um, maybe pick out the noise from a lot of these announcements. Um, when we think about solid state, um, we we actually categorize it depending on the, the electrolyte to semi-solid state, which has some liquid and all solid state. Um, it's uh, somewhat easier to commercialize semi-solid state. Um, and a lot of uh, companies are actually, especially in China, are choosing that path as an intermediate step um, because it has some liquid and, and you're able to get some of the uh, performance uh, to where you want it faster. Um, and semi-solid state is a, a technology that even exists in some EV models in, in China, and um, um, it's uh, it's making progress. Now, solid state is a, all solid state is a little more complicated, and a lot of challenges with scaling it up is the manufacturing complexity, because you'd need different raw materials, you need to procure them and develop supply chains for them. You also need to develop the manufacturing process so that you can meet the quality that you want for the, the specific volumes and doing that at, at a very large scale is difficult. Um, so it's, it's, yeah, it's definitely no, no easy feat to scale up um, solid state, but we're seeing a, a lot of companies making progress. 2026 is an important year um, to, to see how a lot of these companies progress ahead of a lot of targets that they have. Most of the targets for commercialization at the relatively larger scale is closer to 2030. Um, so these are the years to be looking out for how co these companies are actually moving. Um, and we also think that solid state is going to be um, adopted in certain markets first in certain segments. So for example, because it's going to have higher cost, it's going to be more of a premium choice for maybe premium EVs. Um, and it's going to take a while um, to get to mass market segments um, if it does. I have to ask about Toyota. Uh, for years now, Toyota has been promising that their solid state battery for their EVs is just around the corner. You know, they've dragged their feet on the EV segment. Uh, I think the last one I heard was 2028 or 2029. Uh, have we learned anything of late about uh, what, uh, uh, when Toyota is likely to introduce their solid state battery, which they claim, uh, you know, very, very high energy densities, and and uh, much greater safety. Uh, so I'm curious, uh, have you heard anything? I don't think I would have uh, a lot of additional details because beyond what Toyota would have. But what I can say is that a lot of companies like Toyota have very like, robust R&D programs. Um, and they also have a lot of experience in the automotive sector. So they're in a good position to, um, to do R&D and then uh, try to incorporate it into their their fleet. Um, however, for for any large company, it's important to ensure that um, the technology meets certain metrics and meets certain standards before rolling it out. So I can understand why companies would be cautious with announcements, and um, uh, maybe the timeline is not um, one hundred percent clear for uh, for all of us. Um, but it's going to be. Uh, interesting to to see how it develops. Evelina, I'm going to ask you to uh, polish up your crystal ball a little bit. And between now and 2030, what are some of the key trends that you expect to emerge uh, in the battery industry? That's a good question. We actually put out a 10 things to watch um, at Bina for our sector. And it's an exercise that we typically do in, in uh, the beginning of 2026. Um, I think uh, one thing to look out for is, uh, first of all, metal prices. Battery metal prices have been increasing, actually, over the course of 2025. Um, and this is exerting upward pressure on, on prices. So in the near term, this is something to look out for. Um, 
And when it comes to stationary storage, uh, we expect uh, another year of record deployment. So stationary storage is a market that is doing quite well. Um, and we're also seeing a lot of companies moving into that uh, segment when it comes to um, producing LFP for ESS, especially in the US. Um, so stationary storage is another market that is, is doing well. Um, and um, in terms of technology, um, I would say sodium ion and solid state would be two technologies to look out for. Um, we expect sodium ion deployments to uh, be higher than last year. Um, and if there's some upward pressure on battery metals, there might be an additional incentive to be to be looking at sodium ion. So um, there has been a lot of buzz around it. And similarly, we talked about solid state, but 2026 is going to be an important year to sort of see how companies uh, fare compared to what they said they were going to do. So these are going to be areas that we're going to be looking at. Well, Evelina, thank you very much for this. Really appreciate your insights. Thank you.